So here I am one year later after the inoculation of uh, this, these mixed woods with shiitake variety, a warm fruiting shiitake variety that is uh, able to be force fruited, which is once it's fully, once you inoculate the log, about eight to eight months to one year later, you can submerge it in cold water overnight and it will trigger a fruiting because through the eight months, the mycelium has incubated and, and eaten the sugars and ran through the log. So it's, it's big enough to be able to, big enough and strong enough to be able to reproduce into a mushroom. So at that point, you can see at the ends, you see the mycelium coming to the ends of the logs and emerging. And that's a telltale sign that they're fully incubated and ready to be soaked for fruiting. They can also just be, you know, naturally fruiting. And from now on, like this, this is the spring right now here in Quebec, but uh, it's a little cool. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually taking them to soak them near the house and to put them in a shaded greenhouse and the back room, which is like a sprouting room. So it'll be warmer. So they'll be able to fruit faster because I'm only here for a short time this spring. So um, the natural fruiting would start say in May, June, and then you could force fruit them um, once a month um, throughout the season. So that's about three harvests per log per season for three to five years is the, is the, uh, what I've studied, what I've heard. Um, this is the first time. So we're, um, I'm experimenting and, and uh, sharing it with you. So another thing I wanted to, uh, this is a competing fungi here that is very prevalent in this ecosystem. And so it's co-inhabiting with the shiitake. So this is the shiitake here, the white and then the browning. And then this one here is another one. And so what I want to talk about is um, the, the integrity of the bark. Because a big thing with what woods to use for your... Uh, mushroom cultivation is what you have available number one and number two uh, the harder wood the one with the the more um, uh, dense um, bark is ideal so that would be sugar maple and uh, silver birch in this environment and so the silver birch the ones I've seen so far in the stack um, seem to inoculate really fast really well and also the bark seems solid um, the bark on some of the, the red maples that's more mature, it's a little flaky. Um, this one looks like maybe either red maple or sugar maple. The sugar maple is solid, but it's more the red maple that starts to flake a little bit pretty quick. Like this is, you know, one year later. So ideally you want to select woods that will um, make sure that the... The bark is integral because that's where the mycelium kind of lives under and it also helps keep moisture in the log, which is very important. You want around 35 to 30% moisture. If it goes to 25 or starts drying out, then your, your log and your mycelium are, are finished. So keeping them moist. So here's another example of what maybe not to do. I'm going to, I'm going to soak them to see, but I, I had all these logs, they were in the forest, cut for a few months. So I was kind of like, oh, should I inoculate them? They seem like they may be infected by other things. And uh, I used a older um, shiitake block that was fruited already from a friend that has a mushroom farm. And they were sun dried. So he gave them to me and I reconstituted them in the mycelium was kind of weaker and I inoculated them and it doesn't look, it looks like that whole, that other fungi is fully inoculating them. So um, mycelium is so cheap. I would really recommend starting with fresh mycelium for like 17 to $25 per block. You could do 30 logs. That's like 50 cents to 75 cents for fresh, fully hyphalated white mycelium that when you plug it in the log, like it's like, you know, vigorous and like really inoculate your log because these are heavy logs and this is a lot of like physical labor work which is beautiful medicine and uh, amazing service to family in the world 
and um, you know it's part of the holistic stewarding of the land is thinning you know there's so much here and if you want the trees to you know have a little space to express themselves there's a lot of thinning there's a lot of snags there's a lot of upkeep in the forest so this is one of the uh, you know growing mushrooms on logs in the forest with minimal uh, investment it's pretty much just your time and your love to do it um, but it's a great way to add some medicinal mushrooms and edible super gourmet mushrooms into your diet but also um, kind of introduce those novel species to your local forest as well as um, it's the first step into kind of a agroforestry uh, integration into your into your forest and um, yeah all right pura vida that's what i have to say right now <laughs> adios